Motorcycle cleaning and general maintenance of paintwork and component surfaces has always been a bit of a pet subject of mine. Lessons learned in the trade as a younger man. I believe it's all good sound advice that if followed religiously will allow you to slow down that cosmetic aging process that all vehicles go through. Just like running a car, motorcycles are expensive things to run and if you're not careful just coming down to the tools of the trade the things needed for keeping a motorcycle clean and protected can easily run into hundreds of pounds if you're not careful it's easy for it to run away with you people often complain about the price of some of the products that I use we do after all all have different budgets and some people let's face it just don't realize the importance of protecting the bikes rust and oxidized alloy just being something that happens after a year or so irrespective of what you do it really needn't be that way but what i always try to do with these videos is make a conscious effort to make it as cost effective as i can as i've said in the past there are wax polishes and coatings that you can apply to the bike which may have a slight advantage over the items that I show you but in a lot of cases they're prohibitively expensive now what I'm trying to get at here is motorcycle dryers just about every time I produce one of these videos I always get numerous comments from people telling me that I should use a motorcycle dryer a leaf blower a pet dryer and I have to admit the things that I've never actually used myself and the cost money now my way of looking at things if someone complains about spending seven or eight pounds on a motorcycle cleaner is certainly going to complain about spending a hundred or two hundred pounds on a motorcycle dryer a tool that does the same job that a three pound microfiber towel can do but it's reached the stage where you've beaten me into submission after my last video about a month ago again i got loads of comments about motorcycle dryers and leaf blowers and pet dryers and i thought this is obviously not going to go away we're going to have to tackle this subject so what i did i got on the internet i looked at several different makes and models of motorcycle dryers i weighed up the pros and cons price versus purported performance i think i contacted six or seven companies and two companies stepped forward now i was offered two machines for the purposes of review one of them is a small compact handheld motorcycle stroke car detailing dryer the other is a sort of high-end if you like consumer grade high power car stroke motorcycle dryer they're both well under 150 pounds and what i am going to say is i'm not going to do a head-to-head -head test with these two dryers in fact i'm not even going to include both of them in the same video i'm going to show one of them today and then i'm going to publish another video on wednesday showing the other one the reason for this is that i'm not an expert in the use of these machines i've never used one before so i don't really feel qualified to tell you that one is better than the other but on the other hand i'm not stupid i am experienced enough in the world of vehicle cosmetics to be able to discern the advantages and disadvantages of these machines or this method of drying your motorcycle so that's going to be the basis of these two reviews i filmed both at the same time so that we were under similar weather conditions fine a little bit chilly but also a bit windy and i washed the living daylights out of the interceptor in fact i think altogether i washed it three times in order to be able to put together a comprehensive video for both now before we get started on this the reasons put forward to me for the use of a motorcycle dryer are very valid i can see the advantages i've always advocated the use of a good quality microfiber drying towel a clean one in order to avoid swell marks or scratches on your paintwork then a ritual of tipping the bike over at different angles to dislodge water from water traps especially around the engine area followed by what are usually the manufacturer's instructions to start the bike up and run it for five or ten minutes which heats up all the engine surfaces 
making any residual water evaporate. Now that's all well and good, it does work, but it takes time. And you've also got to wait for the engine to cool down before you can start applying any dressings or protectants. Plus, there are some areas that are inaccessible that will still harbour water. And these areas are the areas which inevitably are going to start corroding. And that's where a motorcycle dryer comes in. It offers a more complete drying process of the bike. A powerful blast of warm air can dislodge water from areas you didn't even know collect water. I have to admit, making these two videos has surprised me. Now in this first video we're going to take a look at the Air Force Blaster Sidekick. A very American sounding name, probably because it's made in America. But it's imported into the UK by a company called Killer Brands. Now I'll give Colin the MD at Killer Brands his due. He offered me this dryer completely free of charge with no strings attached. His philosophy being that this is one of his biggest selling products, he's been selling it for some 17 or 18 years, maybe even a little longer. It doesn't really need promoting in his eyes, but he likes my channel, he likes my videos, and because I'm a, shall we say, motorcycle dryer virgin, he wanted me to have it, to try it out, but to put it in his words, make a video about it, don't make a video about it, I don't care, it's up to you. Now Killer Brands is a company that specialises in professional automotive cleaning products. It's a business that's not really focused at the retail customer, it's aimed more at your body shops and professional valeters. And to that end, this blaster sidekick is a professional grade product. I believe it's also possibly one of the most compact. Now the old saying goes something like great things or nice things come in small packages and that's certainly true of the blaster sidekick. I was quite literally blown away by its performance. The sidekick's made by a company called Metrovac based in the States. It's a 200 volt mains powered unit that weighs in at just 2.2 kilograms standing 9.5 inches high. The casing's made completely from steel and it houses a very powerful 1.3 horsepower motor generating 8,000 feet per minute of safe heated filtered air. Now it doesn't come with a hose as standard, but Killer Brands did include the hose for me to try out. And I do think that this is an option worth looking at, especially when working on the upper parts of your motorcycle, because there is always that danger that you're going to knock the dryer against delicate paintwork. The hose will obviously remove that danger. I believe in other countries, this dryer only comes with a very short cable. The idea being that you run it from a normal exterior extension cable. In the UK, however, we have these silly, bulky three pin plugs and that wouldn't work so well. So there's about eight feet of cable with the UK version. It comes with two attachments, a rubber sort of fan attachment, which gives you what is essentially a blade of air and a concentrated nozzle which increases the air pressure and is obviously ideal for blasting water out of small crevices in all different areas of the bike. Now, I said that this unit produces a stream of warm air. It doesn't actually contain a heating element. The heat is actually created by normal processes in the operation of the motor, raising the temperature of the air coming out of the nozzle by about 30 degrees Fahrenheit on average from ambient temperatures. This is a good thing because it means that you don't have a heating element to worry about. It's another thing to go wrong and there's always a danger of heating elements overloading if the filter should become clogged. Now Killer Brands included three spare filters with this particular unit and it's actually filtered from the underside of the unit. Colin told me that it is very important that you keep an eye on these filters and don't allow them to clog up something which is an obvious danger in a workshop environment. It's guaranteed for two years and Killer Brands informed me that this motor is rated for continuous use if necessary. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but there you go.
Now this dryer is marketed as a portable car and bike dryer and most of us also have cars as well as bikes so it is potentially something you're going to get a lot of use out of. Now Colin described it to me as a car detailing dryer and I know where he's coming from with that. We've all experienced that situation where you dry your car off with a microfiber towel or a chamois leather and then as soon as you start to apply polish to your car seemingly litres of water start pouring out from underneath door handles, badges, trims making your life an absolute nightmare. In reality that is what this dryer is designed to do. It's designed to disperse water from behind those areas of the car. You could I suppose dry the whole car off with it but it would take a considerable amount of time but if used properly in that manner it will make drying and detailing your car much easier and less frustrating. Now a motorcycle of course is composed of such areas. The entire bike basically is a water trap with only small expanses of polished paintwork and that is where this dryer comes into its own. This is not as I originally suspected just a heavy duty hair dryer. It is a seriously competent industrial drying machine. Take for instance the starter motor on the interceptor. A very similar arrangement that you will see on most bikes, the Triumphs included. There is a serious amount of water that pools underneath there that I wasn't aware of. And this dryer makes short work of it. The same with the cooling fins on the engine, the areas around the swing arm, and underneath the tank. This high pressure jet of warm air seems to seek out water from every crevice, nook and cranny on the bike. The warmth in that air helping to dry out the surface once the water's been chased away. Now the actual act of drying on the bike isn't any shorter in my opinion than just using a microfiber cloth but it's a more complete drying process providing you're thorough it doesn't leave any traces of water behind it literally seeks out water from everywhere you also don't have that process of having to warm the engine up in attempt to get rid of hidden drops of water and then have to wait for the engine to cool back down again that takes anything up to an hour. So as soon as you've finished with this dryer you're good to go with your polishes and your dressings. One particular area that is particularly problematic or I've always found it to be problematic is drying your rims and your wheels. And again this device makes really short work of it. And there's something else that I realised whilst I was using it. In the depths of winter handling a wet microfiber towel as you dry your bike off. We all know how unpleasant it is as the cold bites into your hands and your fingers. That's enough to put you off washing your bike in the first place. And that unpleasant experience is removed by this dryer not just because you're not getting your hands wet but because you're holding that hose which has a constant stream of warm air blowing through it so it effectively acts like a hand warmer now on polished waxed surfaces it blew all traces of water off leaving a smear free finish behind so even if you're not going to wax your bike it leaves a really acceptable shiny finish that's street free on rougher or textured surfaces surfaces that you can't wax it does leave a few telltale streaks behind places like your engine and your black textured plastics now as I've said I've never used one of these before and that may be down to the technique that I was using only time will tell but either way if you're just giving your bike a quick wash a sort of a half filling them rather than a full filling them it still leaves the bike in a really clean and acceptable condition after use and you can stick your bike away in the garage until the following weekend safe in the knowledge that there's no pools of water lurking somewhere on the bike ready to start biting into your investment. I know I have for the use of a bike dryer for reasons that I explained at the beginning of this video but I have to admit this little unit has converted me it is something that I'm going to continue using now I've got one now without the hose 
this works out at well under £100 with the hose adding about £13 to the overall price. I'll leave the link to Killer Brand's webpage for this dryer in the video description down below for those that are interested in having a look. Once again, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I'll be back next Wednesday with another dryer. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.